Hi, I'm Mark, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to learn the minor pentatonic scale right across the whole neck. This is the first in a short series of videos focusing on pentatonic scales and getting you to play pentatonics like a pro. So that means four things. First of all, knowing how to play the pentatonic scale right up and down the full length of the neck. It means being able to play both major and minor pentatonics. It also means looking at being able to mix major pentatonic and minor pentatonic together in a blues context. And then finally, we're going to look at um, pentatonic substitutions, which is a great way of taking the pentatonic shapes that you'll already be familiar with and applying them in certain ways to get more interesting sounds. So this lesson is slightly different from our regular lessons. Um, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you a method that you can use to learn pentatonic scale right across the whole neck. It's the same method that I used 20 years ago and now, 20 odd years later, I can still play pentatonic scale, pretty much any key, anywhere on the neck. I feel really comfortable about doing that. And that's because I uh, applied this method that I'm going to teach you. Now, once I've taught you the method, I'm also then going to play an example solo, which just takes five licks and moves them right across the, uh, the whole length of the neck. So that you've got an example, and I'll show you the licks one by one, so that you can actually apply that to your own playing as well. So you see a practical example of the method that I'm teaching you as well. So let's start with the A minor pentatonic scale. Now you probably already know this and you probably know it like this. Okay, so that's what we call box position one of the A minor pentatonic scale. You'll notice that it takes in frets between fret 5 and fret 8. So what happens if you want to play elsewhere on the neck? What happens if you want to play higher up the neck or you want to drop further down to where your open chords are? When I started to learn the minor pentatonic scale I would see videos of the guitar players that I really aspired to and they would be able to just kind of play licks that ran up and down the fretboard and that seemed quite different from how I was learning scales which were just stuck within these little spaces so A minor pentatonic just being stuck within the three frets between fret 5 and fret 8. So what I did was I learned a method to be able to break me out of that and learn the, the pentatonic scale right across the whole neck. So that's what I'm going to be covering today, being able to explore this scale in other parts of the neck. But first of all let's take apart what we already know. So there's three important characteristics of that minor pentatonic scale, uh, that little pattern that we just played. First of all, you'll notice it's two notes per string. Um, that's a really important characteristic of the pentatonic scales. They are just two notes per string. If you learn like a, a, a major scale or a mixolydian scale or something, that's often a mix of some strings where you play three notes, some strings where you play two notes. Um, and that makes it kind of the finger a little bit more awkward. Pentatonic scales are great because it's just simply two notes per string and we're going to keep that rule of two notes per string for the whole, for everything that we're going to do here. Okay, secondly, um, penta means five, so it's five notes and these are the best five notes. So if you think of the A minor pentatonic, uh, sorry, the A minor scale, that has eight notes in it and what pentatonic does is it just picks the five strongest and arranges them two, two notes per string. So those notes are A, C, D, E and G. So if we play our scale again, here's what we get. And A, C, D, E, G, A. And then we repeat again. A, C, D, E, G, A. C. So, we've got five notes that just repeat in one octave and then repeat an octave above it. Okay, but those five notes, A, C, D, E, and G, aren't limited to just these three frets on the fretboard. Those notes can be found all over the place. There's an A up here, 
and a C and a D. Uh, there's an E here, there's a G here, for example. So those notes exist all over the rest of the fretboard. So what we're going to focus on is a method for learning them all over the fretboard. Okay, so first point was it's two notes per string. Second note was it's those five notes. And the third point is that we, it's really important to focus on where the root notes are. So when we learn this pattern, um, it's really important to know that the root notes are here, here, and here. Okay, and when I first learned this uh, scale shape, I just was taught it as just that pattern. And, I, and no particular notes were uh, kind of um, pointed out or anything. It was just a pattern of that particular shape. And so I started trying to play it and I was just kind of bouncing around, randomly hitting those notes, not really paying attention to what they were. My playing really changed once I started to focus in on, okay, where's the root note? Okay, and when you focus in and base your licks around the root notes, resolve into the root note, um, your licks start sounding a lot better. That root note is the note that's going to sound most right in that key. So when we're playing in the key of A minor, the root note is A. If we were playing in the key of G minor, then the root note would be G. But we're playing in the key of A minor, so we're going to focus in on those A notes. And whenever you learn patterns or scales along the neck, it's always really important to know, okay, where's the root note? Because that's kind of my home. That's where I'm going to resolve to, because that's the note that's going to sound strongest. Okay, so let's now break out from just frets five through eight. And let's move up, up the neck. And what we're going to do now is we're going to find all those same notes again. And we're going to play just those same five notes. We're going to play just two notes per string. And we're going to focus in on where the root notes are. And we're going to do that between fret 7 and fret 10. Okay? And the shape goes like this. Okay, notice that even when I'm playing, just playing through the shape, I'm always resolving to that root note, finding where that root note is. Okay, so what we've got on the E string is we've got the notes C and D. On the A string, we've got the notes E and G. And then on the D string, we've got the notes A and C. Then on the D, uh, G string, we've got uh, D and E. And then on the B string, we've got G to an A. And then on the top E string, we've got a C to a D. Okay, and our root notes is here, which is uh, fret 7 D string, and our root note is fret 10 on the A string, oh, sorry, on the B string. So we've learned the first two box positions of the A minor pentatonic from fret 5 to 8 here, box position 1, and then from fret 7 through to 10 here uh, is box position 2. So how do you learn those? How do you possibly go through that through the entire neck and learn all those and remember where they are. So this is the method I used. Um, I took one box position per week. There are actually five box positions. If you keep that two notes per string, just those, um, those five notes and you bring it all the way up the neck, you'll find there's actually five different shapes. And I took one shape per week. So I sat down with a pen and paper first day worked out where those notes are, what that shape looked like, drew it out, and then spent two days, 20 minutes a day, just drilling that shape, getting it under your fingers. Then days three and four, drill the shape once or twice through, and then just start trying to find the licks. Again, focusing on where those root notes fall in that shape. And then for the remainder of the week, um, putting on a backing track and trying to just jam over it again, focusing on the root notes um, and just trying to come up with li licks and um, find ways into it, just getting that shape under your fingers, but not just drilling it as a scale shape, but actually trying to come up with licks, trying to do something that was a bit more musical, that's why I would put on a backing track. What I'd also do is, um, on day six and seven of the week, start to bring in licks from box position one into box position two. So you're playing between the two, refreshing what you learned the previous week, bringing it in, and being it, finding ways to slide between 
box position one and into box position two. So that was the first two weeks. And then I did the same thing again with week three, box position three. Drew it out, figured out the notes, drill, drilled it um, up and down the scale, focusing on the root notes, um, coming up with licks, jamming over a backing track. And basically I did that for five weeks, one week per, um, per box position. And as you go from week to week building that up, start to find ways of moving between the box position immediately before it into this box position so that you can start linking these things up. So you might be thinking at this point, why should I work out it with pen and paper and figure out the notes for myself, two notes per string, using um, the notes of the minor pentatonic? Why doesn't someone like me just put them on screen and show you them? Or why don't you just Google it and go find them out for yourself? Well, actually, there's two really good reasons for making you kind of do it yourself, get a pen and paper, draw out a neck on, on the page and figure out where the notes are so you figure out the shape yourself. The first reason is you will retain the information a lot better. Um, it'll be a lot easier for you to retain the information if you've acquired it yourself. If you figured it out for yourself, you'll remember it better rather than just going and downloading the shape. The second thing is it's actually a really good way of starting to learn the whole fretboard because when you're going through and you're trying to figure out where the new box position, the shape, and then where the root notes sit in there, it's, if you do that, even if you do that just in the key of A for five weeks, you're going to know every A note on the entire fretboard. Okay, so it's a really good way of starting to learn the notes of the fretboard, but also you'll just retain the information um, a lot better than if I just simply showed you a, a whole bunch of shapes on screen. The other thing to say is when you're practicing it and you're drilling those uh, shapes, don't just do it in one key. So we've up to now we've been talking about A minor pentatonic. Um, also do the same thing, but think about other um, uh, other keys as well. So in the key of G minor pentatonic, that would be here. Okay, that's because G starts on the third fret. And the easy way to remember it for box position one is if you know your bar chords, so there's a G, that's also where your G, um, your, your root note's gonna start. That's where you're gonna start box position um, one. Uh, if you were playing in the key of C, you'd be up here, and box position one would start here. Okay, so really important, and the particular keys to really work are um, A, C, D, E, G, um, would be all really good ones to start with because those are keys you're probably going to find yourself playing in. Um, particularly, yeah, uh, those that I've just said, that those are kind of really common keys. Okay, so five, five weeks worth of study, um, five box positions, but also... Um, move them around and try them in different keys as well. Okay, so as an example now, what I'm going to do is I'll show you an example solo where I've played um, a solo using A minor pentatonic over just an A minor groove, and um, it, the solo takes one lick per box position, so you can see how you can build a solo that kind of climbs up the neck. So here's the example. So that was the example solo, and what I'll do now is I'll take the licks apart and show you them one by one. But just before I do, um, I want to please remember, I want to remind you if you can subscribe if you haven't already done that. Um, if you subscribe, you'll then get the, be notified, particularly if you hit that bell thing, you'll be notified when the next um, in this series come out. Also, please check out my other videos. I've got tons of uh, videos already out there on YouTube of free guitar lessons uh, around kind of blues and blues rock. The last lesson I did, which was an E minor blues, I actually did the same idea 
took an E minor pentatonic um, and just went up the five positions of the pentatonic scale in order to build a solo. So if you like this lesson, please go and check out that one as well. Big thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. I would not be able to do this without you. Um, and thanks to everybody who's been leaving comments and things because it's actually quite encouraging because otherwise I'm just some guy in my spare bedroom. Anyway, um, on with the licks now. So in that example solo, you hit lick one and lick one goes like this. Okay, and nice and slow. Okay, uh, box position one, we're just using this. Lick starts with two strings together. I'm just using my index finger. Um, this is the G and the B string at fret five. And then two hits on the D. Well, at fret seven. So then the next part of the lick goes like this. What I'm doing is I'm using between fret 5 and fret 7 and playing bending up 7 and down again. Coming off to 5 before hitting uh, 7 twice on the D string. Now sometimes I'll pick those notes, sometimes I will uh, pull off between uh, 5 and 7, kind of however you're feeling it at the time. Okay, so that was lick 1. Lick 2 now goes like this. Nice and slow. Okay, so box position two now. Um, the only thing to kind of really watch with this is when we bend up on the 10th fret of the uh, top E string, we bend up to becomes an E, and then we hit uh, the eighth fret at the top E. So we're not coming down, we're not doing this. We're actually just doing this. Okay, other than that, it's fairly straightforward. Lick three now goes like this. Okay, what we're doing is we're taking 13th fret um, B string, bending it up a whole tone, and then grabbing the top E at the 10th fret. And we're basically doing that four times. Okay, and then we're just walking down the pentatonic. Okay, so that's 12 to 10 on top E to 13 to 10 on the B string. Okay, box position three that was. Okay, and the next lick now goes like this. Okay, nice and slow. Okay, and that was taken from box position four. So lick five now goes like this. Okay, and I'll try and do it nice and slow. So if you've seen any of my other lessons, you probably recognize this lick. I've used this in a, in a few lessons up to now. It's my favorite box position five lick. Um, I'll try and take you through it quite slowly. Um, we're just going to start by um, going fit, uh, where are we 17 to 15 on the top E. So, going, so we're going, um, we've got this little figure to start with. Okay, that's f uh, 17 to 15 as a pull off top E to 17 on the B, 15 on the top E, back to 17 on the B string. So nice and slow. Okay, and the next part goes like this. So we're going to anchor our finger on the um, the D note, which is 15th fret of the uh, the B string, and we're basically going to go hammer on and pull off onto the 17th. Then we're going to go 17 on the G, back to 15 on the B, back to 17 on the G. Okay, so the first part followed by the second part goes like this. And then the third part, we're going to use um, our ring finger and we're going to grab 
17th fret on both the G and the B strings. Hit that twice, bend and slightly sharp. Before resolving to, um, where are we, 14 on the G string. So that final part, nice and slow. So the whole lick, nice and slow. And then up to speed. Okay, and a quick tip for when you're practicing that lick, um, and actually for, uh, what was it, lick three as well, the same idea applies. Because they're quite rhythmic, it's important to tap your foot and feel the beat. So uh, in, where were we, lick three, the beat is every time you're gonna bend up on the 13th fret. Uh, no, it was like this, wasn't it? Okay, so you're getting that pulse as you're doing those bends. Same thing with this one. Feel the uh, feel the the, um, the pulse um, on the different sections. So you go. Okay, so try and tap your foot, feel that pulse, feel that rhythm, uh, and then play it over the backing track. So those are all five licks. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you apply yourself for five weeks to that method, learn that, how to play, um, you'll then be able to play any key, any minor pentatonic key, anywhere on the neck, um, because you'll always know where those root notes are and you can just anchor all your licks off those. Come back, because next time we're going to be taking what we've learned here and then applying it to major scales. So we'll be playing major pentatonic. Hope you enjoyed that. Please hit like, please hit subscribe, and please leave me some comments. Um, and I'll see you again.